In the meantime, I want to go back to the economy and bring in independent member for Wentworth, Allegra Spender. Allegra Spender, thanks for your time. Rates decision this afternoon. Most economists expect them to be on hold, but we are looking at that inflation number tomorrow as well, that monthly inflation number. Very keenly, I'm sure many of your constituents hoping for a bit of rate relief sooner rather than later. Look, I think people are hoping very much so, and, and I'm looking at all these economic indicators very carefully. You know, we, we should see the inflation numbers tomorrow, and I think we're all hoping that they it starts to be heading where it needs to. You know, I'd love to see rate cut, you know, this side of, of Christmas, but we'll just have to see, you know, what these indicators say. How would you describe the, the situation when it comes to cost of living? We saw the news poll yesterday again reiterating what many of us have already known and I think what the major parties focus groups are telling them that cost of living and housing particularly are the things at the, the front of people's minds right now. Look, that's absolutely true. And it's certainly, it's also true for different parts of the community are feeling this differently. I think, you know, if you are a young person in, in my area, you know, who's renting, you know, you are really hurting. If you're a family who's just bought a home relatively recently, you know, you've got high mortgage costs, you're really hurting. If you own your own home and actually have considerable savings, you know, you're not hurting in the same way. So I think that we're seeing this play out differently in different parts of the community. You know, and I think where the government, you know, should really be taking action further is firstly on housing. We need to go harder on housing. That means both making sure we can get the construction workers in that we need. It means um, that we need to have stronger incentives for the states and the local government, you know, to build the houses that we need. Um, those are some of the critical things that you know mm. we need from a housing point of view. But we also need longer term. Um, we need longer term reform. You know, we're we're all worried about inflation, and the truth is that if you can make the, yeah. you know, if we can all do more, you know, if we can work smarter, you're not harder within our businesses. If we can be more productive. That's actually another way that we get on top of inflation. You know, so I'm really pushing the government to work harder in terms of supporting small businesses to start and to grow, but also to take some of that red tape away to make it easier for those businesses yeah. to grow. And I'm going to be talking to Simon Benson for more on that news poll in a moment. But in, in the meantime, I want to ask you about your comments off the back of Peter Dutton's speech on the nuclear plans. They still haven't got their costings out there, but from, from my reading of what you've said, you're actually open to nuclear energy down the track. Is that a fair way to put it? And if so, would you support lifting the moratorium on it? What I was, uh, to start with what Peter Dutton said yesterday, you know, Peter Dutton basically said, don't worry, coal and gas are here for the next decade plus. You know, he's committed, he's recommitted to fossil fuels. Now, if you care about climate action and if you care about energy reliability, you know, you want to make sure that in the next 10 years, we actually are decarbonising our economy and at the same time, you know, making sure that we are have the reliability in our system. And nuclear doesn't do either of those things. So, it's, Kieran, yeah, I'm, I've always been actually open to all technologies. You know, I'm following, for instance, SMRs, small modular reactors, really carefully because I think this is an exciting new part of um, technology and new time for green technology. But it doesn't mean that it's also the right technology to be betting on right this very second. And I'm, I'm yet to be convinced that in Australia, um, it makes economic sense now. And at the same time, we absolutely have to get the next 10 years right. And that is the biggest hole in the coalition's um, current program is they have no plan for reducing emissions and ensuring that we have reliable and cheaper um, energy over the next 10 years. Both of those things are really critical. Yeah. So, so in, in the short term, though, while, while you want more detail on what their plan is for mm -hmm. the next 10 years, do you support lifting the moratorium when it comes to... <laughs> I don't, I don't think the moratorium makes any difference, I'll be honest, because the, you know, the moratorium, um, we don't have any commercial companies right now who are actually trying to bring in nuclear into, into this country. And so, you know, I think moratorium is honestly you know, a piece of paper. It's not the real reason why we don't have nuclear in this country. It's because the numbers don't stack up at this stage and certainly not the numbers that I've seen.